Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Accordion here to share with you five times I bought new gear for dumb reasons. Now, one of the main reasons why I started this YouTube channel in the first place is to help others get right to making great sounding music within their home studios without wasting their time on dumb techniques that don't really matter or expensive gear that really isn't gonna make a difference at the end of the day. Now, I've made a plethora of mistakes throughout my production career and buying a bunch of gear that I really didn't need in the first place it's no exception. So without any further ado, I'm gonna to get to the five times I bought gear for really dumb reasons. Example number one. Now I'd say for the first eight years of recording metal bands, the one thing I struggled with were good vocal sounds. In other words, I had a lot of trouble making harsh screaming vocals fit right within my mix. They were always either too bitey or too dull, too uneven, just too all over the place. So like many others, I turned to online forums for information and advice and, uh, wasn't a good move. I would say the most common piece of advice that people would give me is that I needed a better preamp for my studio if I wanted a better sounding vocal sound. So after months of research, I went out and bought a Universal Audio Solo 610 tube preamp. Now I have nothing against the preamp at all. It is a great all around solid preamp and even has a nice character to it. But guess what? My vocal sound still sucked. My vocals still sounded harsh. They were still all over the place. Turns out that this preamp did not solve any of my problems. It wasn't until I gained a little more experience that I finally realized that it all came down to just proper EQ and compression techniques. In other words, I could have saved myself $1,000 by not purchasing this preamp in the first place. So like many of the other examples on this list, it all came down to simple workflow and techniques and not the equipment. And again, I had to learn this the hard way. And this leads me to example number Two, buying an external outboard reverb unit. Now, very early on, when I first got into Pro Tools, I was obsessed with coming up with some form of pristine sounding reverb. Of course, everyone online was saying that stock plugins are crap. And actually back then, this is back in 2006, people would say that just plugins sounded like crap in general. So after driving myself insane, I went out and purchased, I think it was a MIDIVerb 3. It wasn't a high-end unit, but I thought that taking this unit, putting it in my rack and routing my audio through it would all of a sudden give me a great sounding reverb. And to be honest with you, it sounded like crap. I tried everything, EQing it a certain way, sending my tracks through it in real time, no matter what I did, it just didn't sound right. And do you know what the solution to my bad sounding reverb ended up being at the end of the day? Low passing my reverb with any EQ plugin under the sun. The thing is back then, from what I remember, I remember thinking that my reverb was just too bright and brittle, and I was convinced by people online that I needed a hardware unit to have a warmer sounding reverb. When in reality, all I had to do was just use some common sense EQ techniques on my reverb within my DAW. Nowadays, I just use the stock reverb plugin right within Pro Tools. And if I'm in Reaper, I use the stock reverb plugin. To me, I really don't care. I can use any reverb plugin and get the job done. And this brings me to example number three lusting after an API preamp for a better guitar sound. Now I'm a massive Andy Sneap fan. And back then so much so that I would watch anything online where he was recording in the studio. I'd research all the gear that he was using on whatever album he was working on. And this is around 2009 when he was working with Exodus. And I saw that he was using an API preamp for guitars. So like many others, I used to struggle dialing in an awesome metal tone. And I thought the solution to my problems was to buy an API preamp like he was using and all of a sudden I'd have a great Andy Sneap sounding guitar tone. Now I did not go out and purchase an API, thank God, but I did get to use one at two different studios and I gotta say, I was disappointed. Now I was disappointed not because the preamp sounded bad because it really didn't, but because my guitar tones still sounded like crap, still fizzy, not tight sounding. The mid-range still sounded harsh to me. It turns out that the API preamp did not solve any of my issues when it came to guitar tone. Do you know what did solve my issues when it came to guitar tone? Taking the time to dial in the amp right at the source, using a decent tube amp, having the guitar player dig in while they were playing, using fresh strings, and using proper mic placement. And if I was using a guitar cab that wasn't sounding right in the room, I would swap out the guitar cab. And if the guitar cab wasn't working in general, I would switch to an AmSim. 
In other words, I would do whatever it would take to get the tone right at the source. That's how you achieve a good guitar tone. But at the time, I didn't know that. I thought there was some magical piece of gear that existed out there. And because I saw Andy Sneap using an API, I thought I needed to use an API. When it turns out the reason why his guitar tones are awesome is because he took the time to make them awesome in the first place. And also he was working with some really good guitar players. And this brings me to example number four. The time I bought SM81 microphones thinking that it would help my cymbal sound. Now, let me just say this. I definitely do not regret my purchase. I still use my SM81 small diaphragm condenser mics to this very day. They're great workhorse all around microphones and they're built like tanks. One of the things I used to struggle with endlessly was dialing in a great sounding cymbal sound. I'd always have issues with the hi-hat destroying my mix. No matter how I would EQ my cymbals, where I would place the microphones, what room I was recording in, if I was in a nice studio or my project studio, I would often end up with overhead tracks that were just very harsh and hard to deal with in the mix. So before I purchased my SM81s, I was using a pair of Samson pencil condenser mics, which I still use to this day. And because I was listening to idiots in gear forms, I thought the issue was that I was using cheap microphones. Well, I got my SM81s, set them up, and guess what? My cymbals still sounded like crap. Do you know what solved my cymbal situation? Using proper mic placement on my overhead tracks. Yet again, another example of how techniques are infinitely more important than the actual gear you're using. Nowadays, I'll use any condenser mic for cymbals. I don't care what it is. Super cheap, super high end. I don't care if I'm recording through a $200 interface with cheapo preamps or through a rack of Neve preamps plugged into a bunch of Apogees. I really don't care. Okay, and this leads me to example number five. Now, back when I was in college, I used to intern at a studio called the House of Loud. A bunch of killer records were done there. Paramore's Riot, a few of the Breaking Benjamin albums. I was there when Under Oath mixed an album. Now, one of the things I loved most about these productions were the snare sound. Now, if you're familiar with any of those records, you know what I'm talking about. The snare was just super fat, warm, just undeniable, just killer mixes in general, and especially that snare drum. I just love that snare drum. So while I was interning there, I remember looking up at one of the producer's screens when he was working on the drum tracks. And I noticed that he was using the API bundle by Waves. Now, mind you, I had no idea on exactly how he was using the plugins on the tracks. I just saw that he was using the plugins. But back then, I just assumed that the reason why that snare drum sounded like that was because he was using the API plugins in the first place. So what did I do? Went on to waves.com and bought the API bundle. Now, I don't regret purchasing the bundle. I still use some of these plugins to this day, but I gotta tell you, when I pulled it up into my session, threw it on my snare drum, I was kind of disappointed. My snare drum track sounded nothing like the snares that were coming out of the studio. Now, do you think I was tuning my snare to get the snare right at the source? No. Do you think I was placing my room mics in my room to try to achieve a killer sounding drum sound at the source? No. I thought the magic to their snare sound was this API bundle. Luckily through trial and error and a few more years of experience on my own, I finally figured out that it's all about the source. No fancy pants plugin is gonna instantly give you an awesome sounding mix. It just doesn't exist. Now throughout all these examples, it was never the gear's fault. It was my fault. I had an issue in the studio. I was going after a specific sound. And at the time I thought the solution was in a specific piece of gear and it never ever was. It always came down to my approach and my technique. So always keep this in mind. If you're trying to achieve a specific sound with your mixes and you're going after a specific result or you want your mixes to sound a certain way, don't switch your DAW. Don't spend a boatload of money on a bunch of plugins you don't need. Don't buy microphones you don't need. Don't buy high-end preamps thinking they're gonna solve your issues because they're not. Now, with that being said, I want you to achieve better mixes with the gear you have right now. You can download my five-step guide to better heavy mixes. There's a link below in the video's description. In the guide, I clearly lay out five steps that you must take into consideration when you're sitting down to dial in a mix. Some of these things are things that people constantly gloss over when you really shouldn't. So again, download the guide for absolutely free. I want you to achieve better results in your home studio with what you have right now. So with all that being said, hopefully you've learned something from this video and you can learn from the mistakes that I've made. Again, I started this channel because I want people to be able to skip over all the baloney that exists out in the audio industry, especially in these toxic online forums where people preach gear and gear and gear when in reality, especially in today's day and age, it's not really the answer. You and your technique are the difference maker not the preamp you're using. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. Till next time, happy recording.